When does the dumper start to regret the breakup? That's what we're going to be talking about today, but we're not going to be talking about it in a passive sort of way, like, you know, oh, just sit back and relax, and in 21 days, there'll be a peak regret or something, because obviously, I don't want you to be passive in life. I obviously don't want you to be passive in your relationship or anything else. There are active things that you can do to actually encourage your partner to realize that they have made a terrible mistake in terms of this breakup, and to encourage them to start to make moves to rectify the situation and to get back in contact with you and to work things out, et cetera, et cetera. But first, hello, my name is Clay with modernlove.life, where we help you get the great loving relationship that you're looking for without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not. Because you, of course, deserve to be loved for the unique, amazing, and wonderful person that you are. Okay, so um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. So breakups happen. Um, you know, people do want to get their partner to give the relationship another shot here. But many times this doesn't happen because the breakup might have happened for, you know, very strong emotional reasons, betrayal, hurt feelings, pain, etc. And you might be wondering, like, okay, are they ever going to regret this decision to break up? And the answer is, you know, yeah, it can happen. But there's also times when they may not regret breaking up with you. And so we don't just want to be passive through all of this. You know, I've heard people say that, you know, due to, you know, hashtag science or something, um, that people are going to start to regret the breakup after 21 days or after some arbitrary amount of time or something. Obviously, this isn't something that I would put much stock into because each human being is going to be different. Each situation is going to be different. Just because, you know, you and I broke up because we're incompatible doesn't mean Jane and John are going to break up because of like cheating or something like that. And they're going to feel peak regret at the exact same time. It doesn't work that way because there's obviously different factors at play, such as my own personal uh, emotions and psychology and everything, your personal emotions and psychology, John's and Jane's, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want you to just look at this in some sort of passive way. Here, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, if there is going to be some regret that does happen in play, then there are certain things that need to really happen to kind of stack the deck in our favor. And is there anything that we can do to really, you know, facilitate this happening? Um, and so let's go ahead and break that down in just a moment here. But first, if you do like these videos that I do, it would mean a lot to me and it would help make this Thursday a great day for me if you would ever so gently with your feather touch fingers, tap the thumbs up button for this uh, video and the YouTube algorithm. Also, I wanted to let you know that you can currently save um, a bunch of money and basically get um, 12 weeks of relationship coaching from me and the Modern Love team uh, for really the price of what would normally be three uh, regular relationship coaching calls. I think it's a great deal. It's one of the best deals that we've ever done um, in the history of Modern Love. We've been at this for over 10 years. So if you do want to learn more about that, please head on over to modernlove.life slash lifetime. You can find a link for that down below in the uh, description box of this video or in the comments. Once the live portion of this video is done, you can go ahead and check it out down there. Anyway, um, yeah, with that being said, um, what needs to actually happen for them to regret uh, breaking up with you. First of all, obviously breakups happen for a reason. You probably know why your breakup happened. Um, and you know, I'm not saying this to make you feel bad or anything like that, but you probably know why it happened. And obviously you need to change this. You need to correct course in some way. If there was a lack of priorities, you need to refocus your priorities. If there was some sort of betrayal, you need to focus more on honesty and transparency. If there was too much argument or incompatibility or something, you need to demonstrate to them that the two of you actually are compatible in some way. If there's a lack of emotional connection, you need to practice being more emotionally available and connect more, et cetera. You know, nothing, nothing surprising here, I would imagine. Um, and so that's going to be the first thing that you need to do. And I'm not going to belabor this point because as I've said before, most of the people that I talk to on coaching calls and most of the people that I work with get this. They understand that their partner isn't going to walk back into the same relationship that they walked out of in the first place. And they have already started putting in the effort to make some changes and to correct course in some way. So I'm not going to um, belabor this point because I imagine you probably get this too. And I imagine you probably already have done things to start to uh, turn things around. 
If not, I mean, you know, hey, this is your friendly reminder, but hey, it's it's something that might need to be said to some people out there. Um, next up, we need to actually be able to connect with our partners. Um, if we can create an emotional connection, that's going to then inspire them to say, hey, that actually wasn't so bad when we met up, when we texted, when we talked, when whatever happened. Um, you know, I thought that it was going to be horrible. I thought that it was going to be just, you know, like a, a reliving of the bad times of our relationship or something like that. And it was just going to confirm to me that I made the right choice breaking up. But because we were able to connect well, I'm actually kind of confused about this. I actually don't know uh, what to put my faith and trust in. I don't know if I should say, hey, we broke up for this reason and it's still valid. Or maybe the person that I saw that we had this great time connecting with, maybe that starts to overshadow things. And so emotional connection is really one of the most important things. In fact, it's the most important thing, in my opinion, which is why we've been talking about emotional connection on this channel for years and years and years. I mean, <laughs> there's no shortage of videos of me belaboring the point of emotional connection. It is critically important. And it's unfortunate that so many other coaches sort of skip over this. They think that it's about mind games, reverse psychology, manipulation, just blindly doing no contact or something like that. And unfortunately, it's not. It's about emotional connection because you have to show them, give them a doorway to step through to see, hey, yeah, life actually can be better if we are together in a relationship. And obviously, connecting emotionally is going to uh, do that. The next thing that you really want to do to help them to realize that they made a horrible mistake in breaking up with you. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is within the context of, okay, you've corrected course in some way, and you've demonstrated that you can connect with them emotionally. Now, what's really going to seal the deal is if you can start to, number three, embody relationship ready qualities. Now, what, 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 what exactly does this mean? So, you know, yeah, granted, everyone is a little bit different. We all have different things that we're looking for in life and all that sort of stuff. But I think that when people think about the kind of partner that they want to be in a relationship with, you know, potentially for the rest of their lives, there are a couple common threads that you are probably going to see in most people. These would probably include things like cooperation, forgiveness, compassion, empathy, understanding, uh, teamwork, things like this, right? Um, and if you can start to embody these qualities, then this is going to send a huge clue to your ex that, hey, this person is relationship material. And again, stacked on top of these other things, like number one, they find you attractive. Obviously, they do. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been in a relationship with you to begin with. Um, I, I find it kind of strange that I have to reassure people of this. I mean, I know that people are worried about the friend zone and all of that, but we're, we'll, we'll talk about that maybe some other time in some other video. But you really don't have to be worried about the friend zone because your ex is attracted to you. Um so they are attracted to you. Let's 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 go with that assumption at least for now. If not, then you know there's other videos you can watch on that. But they're attracted to you. Um, you have also corrected course as to why the breakup happened. You've also demonstrated to them that the two of you uh, can connect on an emotional level, and then you are also embodying positive relationship qualities that they could see as being there in their future long term relationship or with their long term partner. Um, such as teamwork, cooperation, patience, etc. This is going to send a huge uh, green flag, not red flag, but green flag to them that, hey, this is the right person for me. And then, of course, with that being said, they just have to work through their own emotional issues of, um, hey, can I change my mind about this? Can I let go of the past? Can I get past my own stubbornness? All that sort of stuff. And there are, of course, other techniques and strategies that you can use to help them through that, such as the fork in the road strategy, one way spikes of doom, um, etc. But this is, is obviously something that you would put in place when they're at the um, crisis point stage in those five stages of getting back together. Um, these are the things that you can do to really inspire them to see that they've made a horrible mistake. These are the things that you can do to really help them to make this decision that getting back together with you is actually a great idea. So, um, yeah, when is your ex going to start regretting the breakup? When they start to realize 
that you are actually relationship material, that you are in fact the ideal partner for them, that you are in fact embodying what they're looking for in a partner, in a husband, in a wife, in a potential parent for their future children, or whatever the future might look like for them, or whatever they might see as you know positive relationship qualities, like emotional maturity, cooperation, etc. When they start to really get this, that is going to cause them to regret breaking up with you. And these are things that you can actively do even after a breakup. So, you know, all of these things we've talked about are things that you can put effort and attention into to encourage them to start to see things in a new way. Um, yeah. Once again, if you like this video, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm, gently, ever so gently. Um, and also, uh, if you are interested in learning more about how to get um, help from us for, you know, the next three uh, months, basically through the summer to help you get your relationship where you want it to be, uh, please head on over to modernlove.life slash lifetime. And you'll hear about a great offer that we have, but only through this weekend, only through the end of Sunday, um, Father's Day, June 18th at midnight Pacific time. Uh, all of this is going away. It's the probably the only time we'll ever do this again. Um, probably never do it again. But anyway, check it out. Um, I think it's personally one of the best deals that we could possibly offer you. Anyway, check it out. And if it's right, I'd love to work with you. If not, that's cool. Uh, but anyway, take care. And we'll talk to you in the next video. Up and up next, though, um, please go ahead and check out this video right here on how to get back together with your ex without using no contact. This basically takes everything we've talked about in this video and puts it into a practical application that you can use. Uh, please check it out. I think it's a great strategy that a lot of our clients have used very successfully. And perhaps you could even too, especially if you're not getting very good results with the no contact rule, which <laughs> wouldn't surprise me because no contact is an anti relationship message. It says, hey, when the going gets hard, I give up, I walk away and I shut down. And if someone's actually interested in having a serious, mature relationship, then that's an anti-relationship message right there. But with that being said, let's go ahead and check out uh, the folks in the comment section. Now we are going to start with the super chats because once again, it's my understanding that I must respond to all super chat messages and these videos, you know, I, I aim for about 30 minutes. So we'll go ahead and go through the super chat messages and answer those and then answer non super chat messages in any remaining time that we have. First up, we have Steph. Thank you very much for the super chat, Steph. I'm scrolling and looking for a mess. I actually don't see any comments here. So I think you're, I think you're just saying like, hey, Clay, you're doing a good job. Let me throw you, you know, four ninety nine here. In which case, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Um, next up, we have uh, TG who says said we we're incompatible. Says I am too mellow. Um, let's go ahead and look more at what TG has to say. Um, hey there, Clay. Yesterday I did a super chat, but got no signal. Um, I, I, I guess uh, maybe you lost connection or something. Um, my ex-boyfriend broke up with me for the second time within a week, moved in with a high school ex. We have a child together. Um, then TG continues by saying, um, he said that we are incompatible. He says, I am too mellow. I'm not sure what too mellow means. Uh, too mellow in my emotions. I've learned that I am a uh, dismissive avoidant. He may be anxious. Um, we have poor communication skills. What do I do if he has moved in with someone after only a week? First of all, classic rebound uh, uh, behavior. There's definitely classic rebound behavior. Definitely emotional displacement at place there. Um, again, you have heard my <laughs> horrible <laughs> experience with emotional displacement and my big ex yesterday, if, if you listen to that video. Um, yeah, let's see. let's see if you can top my story. Anyway, um, TG continues by saying, he also wants to get some of his things and didn't show up to get it. We only text if it is in regards to our son. Um, there is another one here. Uh, I'm now in therapy to get through the grief, build my communication skills, and move away from my dismissive avoidant, um, I guess, temperament. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. So first of all, great. I'm glad to hear that you are getting help for your emotional issues. That's obviously something that I would, you know, definitely encourage you to continue to do. Um, in terms of where things are with him, it sounds like the two of you are not really talking except for uh, regarding your son together. So if that's the case, then, you know, obviously, I think that's where you want to start. You want to start by finding common ground. You know, I was talking to a coaching client yesterday who's going through at least some sort of similar co-parenting kind of thing. So what I'd re really recommend that you do 
Um, again, sometimes I have a hard time remembering all of your um, details in the in the chat section, especially you know if you're if you if, if there's no like picture for me to go with or something. I'm a, very, I'm a very visual person, so you know I need like a picture to remind me of who you are and what your situation is. But um, so I apologize if this is already something that we've talked about or you've clarified before in the past. But I would start by finding common ground between the two of you, and probably the most common ground that you can find as parents of a child is hey. I think we're both wanting to do what's right for our kid here. So let's find common ground here. Let's agree that we both want to be the best parents and set our child up for success in this world and use that as sort of the foundation of a same team conversation. And then as you then go about, you know, doing your co-parenting responsibilities, you know, yeah, communicate with one another about, you know, behavioral concerns or parenting strategies or whatever the case might be. Um, and, you know, be be civil with one another, obviously. But probably as you're passing the child back and forth, if you have shared custody or something or discussing some of these issues, I think it's fine to, um, you know, start to throw in a little bit of your personality, start to try to connect a little bit on an emotional level, you know, share a little memories about things that your kid has done or little um, cute things that they've done. Or I mean, I don't know how old your kid is. You know, I, I'm just guessing that your kid is like the age of my daughter. I don't know why, but she's almost five years old. Um, but yeah, uh, you can probably connect on that sort of stuff, share little things that your kid has been up to um, and stuff like that. And I think that's a great way to start to edge into the emotional conversation. You know, obviously don't use your child as a pawn in this, but obviously the two of you are probably going to be communicating um, about child uh, rearing stuff. And, you know, definitely that I think is an opportunity to um, show a little bit of yourself, take an interest in their experience and all that sort of stuff. As you start to connect more in an emotional level, this way, then it can make sense to start to pull the attention towards you, put the attention on him emotionally, and start to connect in that way. Um, obviously, there is a rebound uh, sort of situation in play. Do not concern yourself with that, because obviously there's not really a lot that you can actively do to sort of pull the rebound relationship apart. What you can really do is to show up as the best version of yourself and to uh, demonstrate again that you are relationship material. Rebound relationships have a lot of challenges already and I, ex I expect a lot of those will start to manifest themselves uh, in the near future if they haven't already started to manifest themselves. Um, Again, it's also okay if you don't necessarily know about these challenges. He's not necessarily going to volunteer this stuff and say, hey, yeah, so-and-so and me are having a rough time. I broke up with so-and-so or whatever. Uh, you don't, you're not necessarily going to know that. Just know that every time that you show up and interact in a positive way, you are building up the emotional connection one layer at a time that's going to help the two of you to create more of a stronger emotional bond with one another. So um, yeah, that that's what I think you need to do. Start by having that same team conversation, start to build the emotional connection between the two of you, and then start to move that emotional connection into more personal matters from the child rearing stuff into, you know, hey, how was your day? This is how my day was, uh, you know, sort, sort of things like that to start to build the emotional connection and see if you can get to the place where he starts to feel comfortable enough to perhaps get together with you, uh, perhaps do something together, you, him and your child, or perhaps, you know, if, if someone else is watching the kid or if the kid's at school or whatever the case might be, the two of you might be able to, you know, get together and do something yourself, such as go for a walk or have a coffee or something like that. And that can then serve as a greater platform for the two of you to connect more on an emotional level and then uh, make that path, make that opening up for you to start to strengthen that emotional connection even stronger. Once it reaches a certain threshold, then you're probably going to be at what we'd call the crisis point, which is then an excellent time to go about um, um, leveraging the emotional connection that you have to really force him to make a decision to let go of the rebound relationship if he's still in that relationship or to choose to be in a relationship with you by, once again, using strategies such as the fork in the road technique, uh, one-way spikes of doom, etc., to really get that moving in your favor there. Anyway, thank you once again for the super chat. Let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, Steph. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So so Steph did follow up with a comment. Let's go ahead and see what Steph has to say. Um, hey, Clay, I was in a 10 year relationship and it ended mutually over a year and a half ago. Okay, so we're looking at uh, maybe beginning of 2022. Um, I get that he is in a rebound. Um, and that they broke up or he got into a rebound and he broke up. Um, okay. So single again, uh, we talk every day. He says he wants to date, but is not ready to be in a relationship. What do I do? Okay. Oh, there's more. Okay. Uh, to be clear, he says that he wants to date me, 
but is not ready right now. I've been waiting for over six months for him to be ready. Uh, we have a good emotional connection and talk every day. Uh, he also, or we also see each other in person about one to two times per week. He says that he understands if I don't want to wait for him. Um, I told him that I will have to move on if he doesn't make a decision soon. He says that, um, that he said, all he says, <laughs> all, if I can read correctly today, all he says is that he will know when he is ready and that he will let me know. I don't know what else to do. Okay. So first of all, um, it sounds like the two of you are connecting pretty well. Now, here's the thing. It sounds as if he is basically ready to kind of make that threshold jump into being in a relationship with you again. But there's a problem, and this is a problem that we've seen many times before. And that problem is that he is kind of afraid to make that final jump into getting into the relationship. Uh, you know, he wants it to, you know, he, he's he's kind of halfway in with you. He says he wants to date you. The two of you are talking all the time. You see each other one or, one or two times a week. But he's also one foot out as well. One foot in and one foot out. And that leads to a whole lot of relationship problems. Um, we don't have to go into that right now, but it leads to a whole lot of problems. And obviously, if two people are ever going to work together long term, they're going to need to be all the way in the relationship, not half in and half out. So what do we do? How do we help him to get all the way in? The problem with getting all the way in is that it can seem like kind of a scary thing for a lot of people. You know, sometimes people might think, OK, if I get back together with you, I mean, like, you know, that's it. That's that, that, that's it. This is the relationship that I'm going to intend on being in for the rest of my life. We're going to maybe get married. We're going to maybe have a kid together. We're going to, you know, do life together. We're going to grow old together. We're going to retire. We're going to travel the world. We're going to live out our dreams. We're going to, you know, live in a, a, a assisted adult living facility <laughs> together and all that sort of stuff. And um, that can seem like kind of a big, scary choice for someone to make. You know, if you're, I don't know, I'm just going to go out on a limb. If you're 30, if he's 30, um, that's like, okay, I have to choose who I'm going to spend the next, you know, 50 plus years of my life with. That's, that's kind of a big, intimidating choice. And so what we want to do is we want to make the big choice start to seem smaller. So, you know, the next time the two of you are connected pretty well, you're talking and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, he says, hey, you know, I really want to date you, but I'm just, you know, kind of scared that it's going to be too much. I'm, I, you know, I, 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 just, I just don't feel ready, all that sort of stuff. And you can just say, hey, you know, I get it. It's hard to be all the way in. But here's the thing. Um, if you and I are ever going to work, it's going to be because we're all the way in. Now, I know it's hard to make this choice about being together for now until forever and all that. But what if we just made this as a, as a small little trial run kind of thing? You know, whatever works for you, um, just kind of make this something reasonably short so that he feels comfortable with it. But I'd say something like, you know, hey, what if we just tried being together and dating each other for, you know, three months? We'll just we'll just try it out for three months. You know, right now it's June 15th on September 15th. We'll we'll give it our all for for the summer. And on September 15th, we'll talk. And if it's not working out, OK, we'll know. We'll know we gave it our all. And it's not working out and we can part ways knowing that we gave it our all and we can rest at night knowing that we tried and it just wasn't working. Um, you know, if on the other hand, it is working out. September 15th comes, we'll check in and we'll know that it's working out. It's okay, okay, something's working out here. Maybe we'll just keep it going for another month, or another two months or another three months. And we'll just keep it going like that month after month after month until something happens or until forever gets there. Is that something that you, you know, might want to try? I'm not asking to you. I'm not asking you to commit to me forever. Just to you know, try it out and let's see if it works. So we're trying to make the big thing seem small. Make the big commitment of you know 50 plus years seem okay. Let's just do it for three months or one month or whatever the thing might be that 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 seems easy enough that he's willing to try it out for a period of time. And then of course after you get that commitment, have another same team conversation just to set the tone for the new relationship or the new dating dynamic or whatever you might call it. Um, work together, open up the channels of communication so that you can have clear communication and move forward from there with a lot of the communication stuff that we do talk about in um, Effortless Connection and all that sort of stuff. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm thinking is going to help you out there, Steph. Um, okay. With that being said, let's move along to... Um, I, I, is this pronounceable? Flovluv. Okay. Says, uh, when I last saw my ex... Uh, 
he repeatedly said that he did love me shortly before splitting and was happy with me during the relationship. Um, he His reason for the split was work pressure so that he can take care of some because so that he can't take care of someone else. He also kept begging for friendship, but I told him we should focus on ourselves for the time being. Um, when we parted ways, his words were, I will miss you. And he also followed me onto the train to say goodbye again. He also still follows my mother on Instagram, even though she has lashed out at him because of the breakup. Um, that oh there, there, this this week um, will be one month of no contact. His behavior and words just confuse me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing that you're um, reasonably new here to this channel. So if that's the case, then let's let's kind of break this one down here. So he says that he broke up with you because of work stress, and he felt probably that he couldn't take care of you or provide what he thought a relationship would require of him or what he thought he needed to do as a boyfriend or a partner or whatever. And so that is a belief, right? Maybe he thinks that, Hey, if I'm going to be in a relationship with you, then I have to call you every single day and, or text you every single day or talk with you on the phone every single day. I mean, back when I was doing long distance with my big ex, you know, we'd like talk on the phone for you know two or three hours and, you know, I can still feel the feeling of the, you know, warm phone pressed against my <laughs> ear. I'm, I'm sure it's not healthy, but, um, <laughs> all those, you know, electromagnetic waves and everything. But, um, I, I, I still remember that feeling and it was kind of exhausting actually. Um, don't get me wrong. I cared about her a lot, but you know, those marathon phone calls were, were tough. Um, and if that's the case, then maybe the two of you just need to sync up about what being in a relationship means, what you expect of him, what you expect of a boyfriend, what you want personally from a relationship. Because maybe he doesn't even need to break up with you. Maybe he just thinks, hey, we got to do those marathon phone calls. Otherwise, I'm a bad boyfriend. And you just need to say, hey there, buddy. Like, I don't know where you're getting that idea from. All I want is for you and me to just, you know, talk once a week or something like that. Is that something you can do? And he's, oh, okay, yeah, that's actually something that I could do. Maybe I can just let go of this guilt, let go of this sense of obligation or whatever that I'm holding on to. And, you know, hey, maybe I actually can play the game on easy mode. And so um, that that's probably like the first thing that would be worth talking about. I think also um, dropping the romantic pressure is going to be a good first move as well, too. Go ahead and check out that video that I'm going to link to later on um, in the description box and in the video card once YouTube lets me. Um, again, apologies that many of the recent live streams have not had video cards in them when I'm pointing at things on the screen. The reason for that is because once the live video is over, YouTube has, as of recently, sent it into processing mode for several hours. Usually I'm not able to um, actually edit the video cards or end screens until the next day. So um, I can't add the video card until then. But in order to compensate for that, I will put a link to uh, the video on dropping the romantic pressure and building the emotional connection without using no contact down below in the description box once this live stream is over and also in the comment section once this live stream is over as well, too. But, um, you know, I, I, I would recommend that you do that. Uh, this whole thing where he wants to be friends sounds like a good idea to me. I understand why a lot of people don't want to do that because they think that being friends means there's no romantic connection, that your two of you are just going to be sitting around sipping lattes and uh, you have to listen to him gush about, you know, this new woman that he's dating or something. You know, it's be like, ah, this, this sucks. I hate this. But that's not how it's likely going to go. First of all, most people have more tact than to do that. Uh, but also the two of you are attracted to one another. Also, thirdly, um, he does want to be in a relationship with you. I can tell that from everything that you've uh, said here in the, in the comment section. It's just that he, 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 he doesn't feel as if he's ready for what he believes the commitment of a relationship entails. And so what he's looking for is to find this gray area between, okay, we're in a relationship and that means I'm going to do a three hour phone call with you every day, or, we're broken up and that means we never talk again. He wants this sort of gray area where he can kind of feel this out. And in a lot of ways, I think that is what the two of you need to do. And that is what we generally recommend that you do. If you go and watch that video that I'm talking about, um, description box, comment section, or you know, if you're watching this several hours from now, um, the, the video card. Anyway, um, that, that's what I think you ought to do. 
Um, it's a good strategy to follow. It's worked well for a lot of people, and I think it might help you out as well, too. Um, all right. With that being said, we're, we're right at about 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and shut this one down. But if you do want to uh, get, in my opinion, one of the best offers that we have ever offered here, uh, please head on over to modernlove.life slash lifetime. Find out how you can get 12 weeks of coaching basically for the entire summer uh, for really the cost of just three coaching calls. What would otherwise be three coaching calls? Uh, go ahead and check it out. If it's right for you, sign up. We'd love to work with you. This is probably the only time we're ever going to do this again. So um, yeah, snag it up while you can. Anyway, with that being said, take care and I'll talk to you next time.